Greetings in the name of Jesus and welcome to day four of our online vacation Bible school. Today we're going to talk about the third person of the Holy Trinity, the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, who was poured out upon the church on Pentecost. And we're going to hear that wonderful story about Pentecost. And then we'll also study the third article of the Apostles' Creed, I believe in the Holy Spirit. Let's have a brief opening prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open my lips, and, and my, my mouth will, will declare your, your praise. praise. Here's the cover of our lesson for today, The Coming of the Holy Spirit. In the Bible, this is recorded in the book of Acts. When Jesus left the grave alive that first great Easter day, he told the friends that loved him so that soon he'd go away. Then you, my friends, must tell the world, my story, all must hear it. To give you power to do this job, I'm sending you God's Spirit. Then Jesus went back home to heaven, and his friends felt sad and lost. But he sent the Spirit, like he said, on the day called Pentecost. That morning in the upper room, where Jesus' friends went for prayer, a sudden noise like rushing wind roared in as they met there. And when the sound at last calmed down on every person's head, a burning flame of fire stood, bright and warm and red. This was the gift that Jesus sent. It gave them power to speak, languages like African, Arabian, and Greek. They ran outside to share the news with folks from every land. It made no difference where they lived. Each one could understand. How can they speak like this, one said. It's a miracle, I think. Most were amazed, but others said, they've had too much to drink. Then Peter, chief disciple, stood and told the growing crowd, The men you see aren't drunk, but filled with special power from God. He's given us the power to speak, so all can understand this story that we want to tell to those in every land. Our Savior Jesus, Son of God, came down to live on earth. He came to Bethlehem, and angels sang about his birth. When Jesus grew, he told why God had sent him from above. He healed the sick, he fed the poor, he lived his life in love. And then you killed this Son of God, you nailed him to a cross. You buried him in a grave of stone, not knowing what you'd lost. But three days later, he arose, alive, no longer dead. His death has washed away your sin. Come, follow him instead. The people heard what Peter said and asked him what to do. Turn from your sins and be baptized. God's calling each of you. That day, 3,000 people joined the church at Peter's call. And that same Jesus still today is calling to us all. He's also given each of us new power from the Spirit. Let's share his story everywhere so all the world can hear it. So we've heard about the coming of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost and what the Holy Spirit came to do. And the third article of the Creed from the Small Catechism explains this even more. Again, we're going to listen to it sung by a children's choir. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin. Resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? Sins and the 
sins of all believers. On the last day he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. So as we confess in the Apostles' Creed, the triune God that is three persons in one God, is the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Three persons, but only one God. The third person of the Holy Trinity is God the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit doesn't like to attract a lot of attention to himself, but he's really only interested in teaching us to believe in Jesus, who then teaches us how to know God the Father and be saved in God the Father's household by being baptized into Christ. So Jesus sent the Holy Spirit on Pentecost to help the Christian church bring people to Jesus. On that first Pentecost, he did it by giving the apostles the ability to speak about Jesus in other languages, other tongues, so that people who were in Jerusalem from all over the world could understand the good news about Jesus. Today, anywhere the word of God is being taught, we know that the Holy Spirit is working on doing the same thing. And one of the things the Christian church does is called evangelism and missions. Evangelism means that we share the good news about Jesus with other people, and we trust that the Holy Spirit works through that good news to bring other people to faith. Missions is when we send people around the whole world to share the gospel with people who have not heard of Jesus before. And we oftentimes have to teach them how to learn different languages so that they can share the good news about Jesus in the languages of the people that they're visiting. The Holy Spirit doesn't do this miraculously today, but he does it through us learning other languages and then translating those, the Bible into those other languages so people around the world can hear the good news about Jesus. So if we are Christians... We know that it is only thanks to what the Holy Spirit has done through the Word of God to bring us to faith in Jesus and to bring us to baptism where we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And throughout our lives, we know that the Holy Spirit is continuing to work for us and work in us when we're hearing the Word of God, receiving the sacraments, and taking up our cross every day and following Jesus. Let us pray. Dear Holy Spirit, we pray that you would come into our hearts to lead us to love Jesus, to hear his word regularly, and then to follow him by obeying his commands. Help us to love one another, serve one another, and fulfill the Spirit's work in our lives by your power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We continue now with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now we'll pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Finally, we'll pray the prayer that Martin Luther wrote in the Catechism, which is a good prayer to pray every morning. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, 
And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. So we conclude our lesson today by singing the hymn, O Holy Spirit, Enter In. And this hymn is really a prayer to the Holy Spirit to continue to work faith in our hearts, love for God and our neighbor, and above all, trust in Jesus Christ as our Savior. Thank you for joining us for day four of Vacation Bible School. I hope today you rejoice and are thankful for all the good things the Holy Spirit has done in your life and that you'll return tomorrow to watch us on day five, our last day of Vacation Bible School, when we're going to talk about the Word of God, the Bible, and Martin Luther and how he rediscovered the true meaning of the Bible about Jesus Christ and our forgiveness and salvation in him. Talk to you soon and God bless you.